Thank you, Luch. The clerk. First reading, a bill for an act to amend the law relating to marriage and for related purposes. The member for Lycan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I move that this bill now be read a second time. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the introduction of this bill into the House today is a significant and somewhat unique uh, in that it has the rare distinction of enjoying very strong cross-party support. While I have the honour of addressing you all, I'd also do so on behalf of all of my cross-sponsors, without whose support it would not have been possible to bring this bill to the Parliament. I'd like to make special mention of them all. Uh, the member for Griffith, uh, Terry Butler, uh, who is seconding this bill. My very dear friend and colleague, the member for Brisbane, Theresa Gambaro. Member for uh, Werriwa, Laurie Ferguson. Member for Melbourne, Adam Bant. Member for Indi, Cathy McGowan. And the member for Denison, Andrew Wilkie. Thank you all for your encouragement, your counsel and your patience in supporting this bill. I would also like to thank Rodney Croom, who has been with me on this journey from a point where I had much less understanding of this issue. I would also like to acknowledge Ivan Hinton Teo, uh, John Lamont from Theresa Gambaro's office for his comprehensive work in drafting the bill, the highly professional staff of the Tables office and the Clerk's office, in particular Mr Andrew Freeman, uh, legislative drafter in the Clerk's office, and Heather Beck from my office for her great assistance. Uh, I won't linger too long on the technical aspects of the bill, which have been detailed extensively in the explanatory mem memorandum and statement of compatibility, but I do want to make these points. This bill does not create different classes of marriage. It does not establish a hierarchy or ranking system pitting a marriage between a same-sex couple above that of a heterosexual couple or vice versa. It provides absolute protection of religious freedoms not just in observance of section 116 of the Constitution, but because you cannot uh, replace one form of prejudice and discrimination with another. The main purpose of this bill is not a complex one, Mr Speaker. It is to give same-sex couples in Australia the same right to marry the person they love as that which is currently only granted by law to heterosexual couples. Mm -hmm. This bill is designed to promote an inclusive Australia, not a divided one. A divided nation is what we will be if we continue to allow discrimination in relation to marriage on the basis of a person's sexuality. The co-sponsors of this bill acknowledge and accept that there are strong and conflicting views on marriage equality, and we certainly respect those views. In addition, we are not in any way trying to change those views. However, we do what we believe is right, and therefore our actions aim to recognise the claim of all peoples to equality before the law. The bill gives expression uh, to this by changing the law so, that it, uh, so as to allow any two people to marry and have their marriage recognised regardless of sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or intersex status. Colleagues, much of the evolution of our social norms comes about through greater understanding. Many aspects of tradition that were seen as usual practices 50 or 100 years ago are clearly today unthinkable. As pro a progressive society, we need to continue to make appropriate changes uh, to our legislation over time. We live in a modern society where women and Indigenous people have equal rights to vote, mixed-race marriages are acceptable and being gay is something not to be ashamed of. We believe that when it comes to marriage equality, that time is now. The institution of marriage is about two people making a commitment to a monogamous relationship for life. Who is to say that one person's love for another person is in some way lesser because of their gender makeup? Mm -hmm. Over the years, I've, had, I've made many friends in the gay community, people such as a Sydney couple, John and Arthur, aged 83 and 87 respectively, who have been together for more than 48 years. They are now in, the sun, in their sunset years and would dearly like to formalise their relationship through the Institute of Marriage before it's too late. After almost 50-year commitment, their relationship is still regarded as second-rate under Australian law. This is not good enough. I'd like to highlight another per other personal circumstances uh, which have also helped to define my position in uh, supporting marriage equity and the removal of all elements of discrimination. It is these circumstances which continue to convince me that progressing this issue is certainly the right thing to do. As a young man in rural Australia, regional uh, in rural Queensland, 
was quite enlighten it was quite enlightening as I came to realise that a person's sexuality certainly got nothing to do with lifestyle choices. I had an experience where a friend of mine trans transitioned uh, from male to female. Her courage in taking this step in the 1970s has left a lasting impression on me while hiking, uh, highlighting the futility of the nature virtue, uh, versus nurture argument. As she herself has said to me, there is certainly never a straighter family or community than the one that I was born into, and for the sake of these families that uh, for those families that differ in composition to the Prime Minister's ideal, I would hope you're successful in your campaign. More recently, I had the privilege of meeting a young man called Lachlan Beaton. Lachlan has posted a YouTube video about the mental anguish and struggles he's faced in hiding his sexuality, and it hit me to the core. Despite knowing from a young age that he was gay, Lachlan didn't come out until he was 27 years old, and his twin brother, Charles, um, Twin brother Charles uh, was not aware of his sexual orientation. How can one argue that being gay is a lifestyle choice when twi identical twins, developed together in their mother's womb, are raised in the same household by the same parents, yet one was gay and one is not? As for Lachlan and Charles' parents, I'm sure that they would hope their sons each find true love and settle down one day. But when they do, why should one son's commitment to his life's partner be seen less of a, uh, as less of a value than the others when one can marry the love of his life while the other can't? The other question to consider when discussing the family unit is how to define the traditional family these days. The last census in 2011, there were more than 6,300 ch children living in same-sex parented families across Australia. This number will certainly be significantly greater now, and the rights of these children also need to be considered. The fact that, man, uh, that many of the children in same-sex families are the biological child of one of the parents and the best environment for these children growing up is within a loving, loving family unit, and those children are deserving of equal protections within that unit. To me, this bill provides another step in affording that protection. Mr Deputy Speaker, further opposition to marriage equality has been based on people's religious beliefs. I have, however, received many examples where people have reconciled their faith and their compassion for members of the LGBTI community. I was incredibly touched by the mother who wrote to me earlier this year who said, I am the mum of four adults, one of whom is gay, and I've known he was since he was three years old. It was that clear. I prayed for all of his life that God would change him, and he didn't. Instead, I changed, and I am so thankful for all that my son has taught me about love and tolerance. I also received strong support from a retired Anglican bishop who is very aware of the pressures that face young people in the Christian community. He said, I've been a bishop for 30 years, a priest for 60, and of my four sons, two are gay. I've been very much aware of the attitude, as it's been over the past 60 years towards homosexuals. Being in the church, I've seen such a lot of nonsense put forward in the name of Christianity. I'd like to congratulate the 106 clergy who presented the co-sponsors of this bill with a letter of support of marriage equality last, last week, led by Archdeacon Father Peter MacLeod Miller, Reverend Angus MacLeay and Reverend Margaret May Mayman. As I have said, uh, earlier, Mr Deputy Speaker, marriage equality uh, does bring out very, very strong emotions right across the spectrum uh, from, the view, uh, from the viewpoints in our, our society. And I think it's very, very important that uh, while people are certainly entitled uh, to have a view, and uh, this bill is certainly not in any way trying to influence individuals' views on this, I think in, uh, it is very critical for us as we as the issue progresses uh, in the coming months, we need to aim uh, for a very, very high standard of, of dialogue. And I think we need to deal with this issue with the respect, the patience and the dignity that it does deserve. It is certainly an issue that, irrespective of what people think in relation to priority, it is an issue that is very, very, very important to many, many people in our society, both within the gay community and the families and the friends and those support the rights of those individuals. 
And with that, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I commend the bill to the House. I thank the member for Leichhardt. Is the motion seconded? The member for Griffiths. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I second the motion. I reserve the my right to speak. The question is that this bill be now read a second time, but the time allotted for this debate has expired. The debate is adjourned and resumption of the debate will be made in order of the day for the next sitting. The clerk.